first of all, I would like to thank you for, for your kind invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to, to, to be here, to, to have this opportunity. Um, so, well, when I was preparing these notes, uh, well, I kind of had to think a little bit uh, because, well, I guess all of you heard about Bellman function method. Well, most of you uh, know it very, very well. So, um, you know, I had to think a little bit how to how to make this this these lectures uh, interesting for for everybody. <coughs> um, okay. Well, I hope they will be. Okay. However, those of you who are familiar with Bellman function method perhaps uh, will not find many new things today. I mean, today I, my plan is to introduce this Bellman function method uh, for martingales and, and discuss various extensions and so on and so on and so on. And well, we'll see the, the examples, the applications tomorrow and, um, and on Monday. That's, that's my plan. All right. Okay, so let us start perhaps with <coughs> with some motivation, with some definitions and so on. So <coughs> let us start with some very basic, very interesting question. So let us assume that HN is a horse system. Okay, so the the classical system of, of functions on, on the interval 0, 1, okay? And um, <coughs> so a classical result of Schauder asserts that this is a, a basis of LP, when P is between 1 and infinity, 1 included, infinity excluded, okay? And <coughs> so the basis Okay, and the classical result, another classical result, uh, which is due to Pali, uh, asserts the following. Namely, if if we take a sequence of real numbers, okay, and we take a sequence. of signs, all right, then okay, then we have the following inequality. Okay, where n is 0, 1, and so on, and so on, and p is strictly between 1 and infinity. Okay, actually this, of course, this, this p here is just the LP norm of, of 0, 1, okay? So actually the, the statement is that for any p strictly between 1 and infinity, there is a universal constant cp, okay, which depends only on p, such that this inequality holds, okay? actually. Pali formulated the result uh, in terms of, of Walsh series, and um, this, this formulation is due to Marcinkiewicz. Okay, um, <clears throat> so actually this, this inequality means that Haar system is, a, on, is an unconditional basis of LP uh, for P strictly between 1 and infinity, okay? Well, this is, this is a very beautiful result, okay, and it's, it's really stimulated the the development of mathematics. I believe that it's one of one of one of perhaps one of the not one of the most important theorems, but certainly a very important fact. Okay. <coughs> All right. So that's let's say um, analytic motivation. Okay. So among among possible extensions, okay, there is a probabilistic extension. Okay. Okay, and here we 
here we have the contribution of Brookholder. Okay, <clears throat> namely, he Brookholder proved um, the Martingale version of this inequality. What 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 did he show? All right, so let us introduce the necessary notions. Okay, so all right. So, so let us start with some definitions. So assume that omega fp is a probability space. Okay, we have the filtration fn, which is just a non-decreasing se sequence of subalgebras of f. Okay, <clears throat> and we have a martingale, adapted martingale. Okay, so f. Adapted Martingale. What does it mean? It means that, well, this word adapted means that each Fn, okay, is measurable with respect to, to, to the field Fn, right, this, this sigma field, all right, and what, what is Martingale? Martingale, it means that, um, that these random variables, okay, these measurable functions on this probability space, that they are integrable, all right, integrable, and moreover, we have the following condition, that the conditional expectation of fn plus 1 with respect to fn is just the, the random variable fn, all right? This happens for... All right. <clears throat> Perhaps it's, it's convenient to rephrase it in terms of the associated difference sequence. Okay. So... Uh, So let us, okay, so each martingale has its own different sequence defined by the following formula. So df0 is just f0, and dfn is fn minus fn minus 1. Okay? So in other words, different sequence is just uniquely determined by the condition that such an equality holds for all n. All right. Okay. So, so this Martingale property, which is which is here, okay, can be equivalently okay. So Martingale property. So it's just equivalent to saying that conditional conditional expectation of dfn plus one with respect to fn is zero for O n. All right. Okay. Okay, there is there is a very important object which can be considered here, namely the Martingale transform. Okay. So what is Martingale transform? <coughs> so um, it is the following uh, Martingale, namely take. Epsilon 0, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and so on, so on, so on. Let's say for a while that this sequence takes values in plus, minus 1. Okay, and <coughs> let us assume for a moment that it is deterministic, okay? Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, so then, okay, if we define the following sequence, okay, well, let us okay, the following formula, okay, so very similar to to this equation, but we multiply by this epsilon epsilon k, okay. In other words, we change the sign or we leave it unchanged. Okay, this thing is, is called the transform of f by epsilon. Well, just for notation, perhaps let us mention here that, okay, if we assume that this transforming sequence epsilon is as here, okay, deterministic and with values in plus minus one, then such an object will be called 
plus minus one transform. Okay. In fact, one one can consider similar objects, but here with epsilons being predictable random variables. Okay. So each k may be a random variable which is measurable with respect to the previous sigma field f k minus one. Such thing also is called Martingale transform. However, for our purposes, we'll, we'll focus mainly on such transforms. Okay? They are, such transforms are, in a sense, extremal. Okay? Having proved an inequality for such special plus minus one transforms, one can deduce corresponding bounds for these general transforms by some decomposition and so on. So, so actually, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing bad in restricting to, 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 to these special transforms. Okay. So now, oh, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. So now we we can state the result of the holder. Okay, so the result is the following. So if f uh, So for any p between 1 and infinity, there is an absolute constant Cp, okay, finite, okay, such that if f is a martingale and g is it's plus minus one transform, then we have the following LP bound. Okay. Uh, all right, so this P is already written there n equals 0, 1, so, and so on. Okay? So this is the result of, of Burkholder. Okay, so perhaps just a few sentences about the relation to this previous result of Pali. Well, <clears throat> such partial sums, okay, with respect to the Haar system, okay, uh, they, they form a martingale. Okay, so such a such a such an object, okay, if we if we name it as Fn, okay, this this is a martingale, okay, and then of course this is G, okay, this is this plus minus <coughs> one transform, okay, so this this result does extend that that previous one, all right, okay, um, so this is there is that that is one thing, um, and. Perhaps I will I will mention on also uh, one thing more. Um, perhaps just as as a small example. Uh, so so let us write this down as remarks. So the first thing is that this theorem. generalizes the result of Pali. All right, and the second thing, just just as, a, as, a, as an example, okay? Because um, some, some of you may not like martingales or something like that, okay? So, uh, a, similar a similar statement, okay, like, like here in Pali, can be, uh, can be formulated when we replace this Haar system by the so-called generalized Haar system. Okay, so well, that's a very simple remark. The idea is the following: if you if you have this the construction of the Haar system, okay, so in each step you you just take one of the intervals, you divide it into half, okay, and you take one plus one minus one, and you have the Haar function, okay. Then you take another interval, you split it into two halves, okay, and then you Okay, uh, so instead of, of this classical Haar system, you could also consider some other generalized Haar systems. Okay, so in other words, you could not you could also split in some other ratio. 
Unfortunately, not not in half, but I don't know, one one, one third. And then just if you, if you took the random variable so that it has mean zero, okay, then this thing all, also uh, uh, forms a martingale. Then okay, so I will write it. One can. Okay, by generalized HAR system. What is important? What is important that in this inductive construction of the HAR system, okay, it it does not matter actually. It does not matter in which ratio you split. What is important is that you on each on each level you must have mean zero. Okay, if this this. You split and you take this, this, this new function, and if it, it has integral zero, okay, then such, such, a, such a function, such a collection of functions, okay, it forms a martingale difference sequence. Okay, yeah? Uh, so won't the constant suffer when you do this? Uh, I mean, doesn't the constant depend on that ratio? No, not at all. No, 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 because they are, they are, only, they are all martingales. All right, so it's, it's not... It's not okay. It does not depend on the ratio, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and in fact, if you if you don't like martingales, you may think about these generalized har uh, har functions, and then actually, these these generalized har functions are extremizers, in a sense. So all the other all the other martingales, in a sense, can be obtained using some decompositions and so on, so. On. So if you if you if you want you may think about Har system or, or its generalized version instead of martingales and oh everything will work fine. All right. Okay. Perhaps a word about um, uh, about Burkholder's proof here. Okay. So the the original approach of Burkholder used um, interpolation and weak type inequality. Okay, so original approach so just interpolation and, and, and the following estimate Okay, the weak the the weak one one type inequality. Okay, so Burkholder. Okay, I, do, I did not write these assumptions. They are the same as in the previous theorem. Okay, so under these these assumptions, Burkholder showed the existence of a universal constant c such that we have the following inequality. Okay, this is just the weak type bound. Okay, and then using, of course. It's 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 very easy to see that if you if you write down this inequality for p equal to two, okay, and this is evident. This martingale difference, differences are orthogonal, all right. So it's easy to see that there's there's equality actually equality with constant one, okay. So this bound holds for p equal to two, okay. We have weak type bounds of using Martin-Kavich interpolation theorem, you get this LP bound for P between 1 and 2, okay? And then using uh, duality, all right, you get this for the full range. So that was the original proof, okay? So, so that was the original proof. Okay. <coughs> but there is a very nice question. I mean, it's, of course, it's interesting. It's of course also from the from some aesthetic reasons, namely, what is the best constant here? That's a very nice question. Also, what is the best constant here? That's that's the key. Okay, so question. All right. Okay, so of course this question is, is, is very interesting. Another very interesting issue is, well, how can we attack this problem? Okay, what are the methods which may lead to this estimate? Okay, to this discovery of this optimal constant. So, very nice question. Okay, 
And this question was answered um, by Burkholder in 84. Okay. Okay, I will just write. So the best constant in both these estimates, okay, first of all they are the same, these best constants, and the second thing is that the value of this constant is is equal to p star minus 1 where p star is just the maximum of p and its harmonic conjugate all right and well uh, and Burkholder's proof rested on um, Bellman function method all right on the construction of a certain special function which, which has some beautiful properties and well one of the objectives of this talk is to well investigate the, the properties of such Bellman functions and, and this whole methodology all right okay well, before, before, before we turn to, to, to Bellman function method, as well, we are just at the end of the, of the motivation. Okay, perhaps let me, let me just mention um, several extensions. Um, first of all, well, all, all these results, okay, um, are formulated for uh, real valued processes. Okay, well, everywhere here was real valued. All these things can be studied in the vector setting. I mean, when these processes, sequences take values in Hilbert space or Banach space. Okay, if you actually, if you, if you study this, uh, this inequality, for instance, okay, this, this, this thing, uh, for uh, Banach space valued processes, this leads to the so-called UMD spaces, unconditional for Martingale differences. Okay, more or less this is the definition of a UMD space. Okay, but let me just let me just remark here that it is strictly related to the UMD spaces. Um, another important comment here is that okay, these these things um, uh, were for Martingale transforms. Okay, these these theorems actually hold for more general. Uh, class of, of sequences, the so-called differentially subordinate Martingales. They are very convenient for applications. Okay, so actually, I will talk about this during the colloquium today. All right. Okay, and perhaps one 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 thing more. One can also consider similar problems. Okay, so LP bounds, this weak type bounds for. Semi martingales. Okay, so for, ex for example, for sub martingales, super martingales. Okay, so for this, you assume that the process F is a sub martingale or super martingale and then take its transform. Okay, as, as appears, where is it here? Okay, the same, the same formula for the transform. And again, you can ask this, the same questions what are the best constants and so on and so forth. Okay. And the super and sub martingales are when that uh, the conditional uh, the, the definition of the martingales with the Yes, exactly. Okay, so this is the definition of the martingale. Okay, if you want to have sub martingale, all right, then you write it the inequality. Okay, in this direction, if you want to have a super martingale, you write the inequality in this direction. Okay. Then, of course, if you if you transform a sub martingale or super martingale, then this transform sequence need not be either either a super martingale or sub martingale. Maybe just 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 some sequence. Okay, it does not have to 
possess any, any special properties. Alrighty. But of course, if we start from martingale, then the transform is also a martingale. Alrighty. Okay. All right, so that was the motivation. I guess uh, there are plenty of things which are which are worth saying here, adding here, but you know, just for just because of the time pressure, I would I, I have to stop here. All right, and we and we turn to to Bellman function method. All right. So actually. Um, so just to just to stress, so our objective will be to study this estimate and this weak type estimate, this best constant in this weak type estimate, actually actually in a in a more general setting, in a sense that in the sense that um, uh, there there we we see the statement of the weak one one inequality. All right, we'll study the corresponding weak PP estimate okay also with best constant and so on and so on as we'll see there are very interesting phenomena occurring there all right okay. So Bellman function at Okay, so well, so uh, I should begin with with a very very general sentence. <clears throat> so well in general Bellman function method, well of course as as you know, well it's it's the technique, okay, which reduces uh, the problem of, of proving a given inequality in probability, in harmonic analysis, okay, have you, you want to show this inequality, okay, so this, this method reduces this problem to the problem of constructing uh, a certain special function, okay, which has some special majorization and convexity, concavity properties. Okay, that's the very general idea behind the Bellman function method. Okay, so what, what is this concavity and so on? Majorization, it depends on the problem. Okay, but that's, that's the main idea. All right, <clears throat> so we will study the probabilistic version of this technique. Um, and let us now focus on the basic version. All right. Then we'll see some extensions of, of this technique. All right, so, okay, so what, what, what we assume? We assume that F, G are just martingales adapted to the filtration Fn, all right? Actually, it will be in one place. It will be convenient for us to assume that this filtration is the natural filtration of this marking case. All right. So, in, in other words, we uh, so with, with with no loss of generality, we may assume that F n is actually the sigma field generated by this by these sequences. Okay. So it's generated by F zero, G zero, F one, G one, and so on and so on and so on. F n. GN. All right. Okay. So far, we do not assume that G is a transform of F. Not yet. Not yet. Just just send it to marking guess. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So what um, what is the next step? Okay. So. Um, and let us, for the time being, assume that these martingales are real valued. Okay, so we are in the simplest case. All right. So next, for x, y, for so fixed two two real numbers. Okay, let, let us assume that 
n of xy, okay, be the collection of all par of all pairs fg as, as above, okay, such that the following conditions are satisfied, namely f starts from x, okay, if I write the, these three <coughs> these three line segments, I mean that this is identically x, okay? G0 is identically y, okay? And or okay, for all n. Okay? So we see what, what, what happens here. So mxy, okay? So essentially, these are pairs, such pairs fg, that f is a martingale starting from x, g is a martingale starting from y, and g is a plus minus one transform of f, more or less. Of course, this, this condition of being a martingale transform can be vi violated only on the, on the zeroth coordinate. Okay, so we start from some point, xy, with this, this martingale pair, and then we move according to the transforming, some transforming sequence. That's the idea. Okay? Okay, for instance, if we, if we wrote, if we take y equal to x, okay, then, or y equal to minus x, then g is a plus minus one transform of f. Okay? So, idea is that g is a transform of, of f, but except for the starting point, yeah? Sorry, so for each n you can have either equality or counter equality, right? You can yeah. either plus or minus. It's not that you have for all n you have equality, or for all n you have the minus. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, next. Assume that we have um, perhaps one, one, one small comment more. Well, for some technical reasons, okay, we'll assume that, uh, so for we'll work only with simple sequences, okay, assume that f, so g is also, no, it's, it's simple. Simple, it means that uh, each each random variable which enters this, this martingale takes only a finite number of, of values, okay? Okay, so, so it, fn is simple and uh, there is n sad that Okay, so it's, each, each variable is simple, it terminates after a number of steps. Um, so, one small comment, so, well, we, so we will restrict ourselves to this simple uh, setting. Actually, this is not restrictive. I mean, if we manage to prove any estimate, for instance, estimate of this type for such simple martingales, Okay, then after some straightforward approximation, we get the result for general. Uniformly with respect to n. I'm sorry? Uniformly with respect to big n, yes? You have to prove something uniformly with uh, the big n number. Right? Depending on n. No, 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 we'll, no, 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 just. Independent. Independent. Won't depend on n capital. Oh, I don't know. The estimate you prove will not depend. On the end cap. No, 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 of course not, no, no, no. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 mm-hmm, okay, um, all right, okay, of course, if f is simple, then this transformed martingale, okay, is also simple, that's, that's clear, okay, next thing, all right, so let us assume that <coughs> it's a function, some fixed function. It, it may be measurable, it need not be measurable it, or integrable, it, just, just any function. Okay? And, all right. All right, 
So now we can uh, introduce the associated Bellman function. Okay. Okay, so, so I, will, I will use this notation throughout the, all the talks. So this B0 will be the <coughs> so, so perhaps let me write this down. All right. <coughs> so, okay. So what we do, we take this this function we, we fixed here. We evaluate it at this. Uh, we so we pick. Okay. So we pick a point x y. All right. We pick a martingale per f g. All right. From this class. Okay. We evaluate this this per by by the function v and take expectation. All right. And you want to get as much as we can. All right? And the question is what is the formula for B0? Okay? All right, so perhaps it's, it's worth to, to say here about the relation with the, with the previous problems. Well, this relation is clear, okay? How, how this question we have just formulated, how it is related to our previous problems. For instance, okay. If we take the following function, okay, right, and we look at this setting, we are led to this estimate, right? So, okay, so then this LP bound. Is equivalent to saying that right? That's exactly this. Right? If we manage to prove this inequality, this is exactly okay, so as, as we have said before, right? If we have here this x plus minus x, all right, then these elements of mx plus minus x are just plus minus one transforms. Okay, so if we prove this, then we automatically get this. All right, and similarly, okay, if we take <coughs> the indicator function minus c times the norm of x, okay, the modulus of x, then this uh, this B0 leads to this weak type estimate, okay? All right? <coughs> okay, so, <coughs> so you see we have transformed our original problems to, to the problem of, of bounding this B0 from above. Okay, all right, and um, okay, I think that it's a good, good place to, to, to make a small break here. Okay, and we'll, we'll come back to this after the break. Okay, all right, so we have just reduced the, the, our original problems to the problem of, of bounding this, this associated Bellman function from above, all right? So how, how can we treat this problem, okay? So to treat this problem, we consider 
the class of special functions let's say b without without zero here okay b okay which which satisfy the following conditions all right the following two properties so the first property is the modularization okay Okay, so the, this we consider the functions which majorize our initial function v, and the second condition is the concavity, or rather diagonal concavity. Okay, it's the following <coughs> property that for a, for any x y. Okay. Any epsilon, any any sine epsilon, okay? Any <coughs> alpha in zero one, and any t one t two in R such that alpha t one plus one minus alpha t two equals zero so for for all such parameters we have the following bound alpha b x plus t1 y plus epsilon t1 plus my one minus alpha x plus t2 y plus epsilon t2 does not exceed B of x, y. All right. Okay. All right. So, so we consider the class of all functions which satisfy this modularization and concavity properties. Okay. So, well, before we proceed, let us let us mention, perhaps, let us comment on the on the second property because, well, it may look a bit a little bit strange. Okay. So. Uh, so actually, this this concavity sometimes I will call it diagonal concavity. Okay, it's it says the following. It's it's equivalent to the following statement, namely that uh, for any x y any <coughs> any sine and any mean zero any centered random variable and a simple let's say xi with mean zero we have that the expectation of b x plus xi y plus t xi epsilon xi does not exceed v of x y all right so or to put it in, a, in yet another words uh Actually, this condition means that this function b is concave along lines of slope one or minus one. All right. Perhaps this this is why it's called diagonal concavity. All right. Okay. And what is the relation of this class to the to our problem? So a theorem, okay, so assume, okay, <coughs> B satisfies these two conditions and let FG be martingales satisfying this condition or ok 
Okay, for all n, larger than one. Okay, so it's almost a plus minus one transform, but we do not assume anything on the starting variable. Okay, so f0, g0, they, they can be variable. Well, that, that, that is not... <coughs> Uh, okay, so so then if we compute this all right, expectation, then it does not exceed. Okay, so in particular. If you take a look at, at the definition of B0, all right, so if in particular, if we, start, if we take this, this pairs from the uh, class M here, all right, we get that B0 is bounded from above by D, right? It's just, just from the very definition of B0. Okay, this is this is just the particular case of, of this inequality. Okay, so this is the, our our first part. All right. Okay, so I guess I should. So what is what is the proof? The proof is very very simple. Uh, actually, what is what is really worth stressing here is again this, the the general remark concerning Bellman function approach. Okay, the the general idea of Bellman function approach is uh, is the following, namely if you if you have this special function, okay, you always Take the special function and compose it, apply it to certain, let's say, intermediate problems, intermediate objects. All right, you combine it, and then you obtain a sequence, a non-decreasing sequence of of integrals. That's uh, that's very general. Uh, look at Bellman function method that you compose this special function with some intermediate objects related to to appropriate functions and so on. Okay, so here we compose this Bellman function or this, this special function B with the martingales. All right, so, <clears throat> so the key is that if we look at the composition of B and this process is a super martingale. Okay, okay, so what I mean by that all right, so I mean this this is the super martingale property. Okay. And how would how do we prove this? So let us let us proceed here. All right, so this is very simple. So we write fn plus 1 as fn and the n plus, one, uh, n plus first difference, the same thing with g. All right. And now what we do, we take a look at this, at this equivalent condition here. All right. Here. Okay. And we apply it conditionally. Okay, so what we do, right, that's, that's, that's how the conditional expectation work, okay, works. Okay, so we, in a sense, right, because we, we condition here with respect to fn, all right, then we, we can treat these fn and gn as constant, all right, so in a sense, 
all right? We can treat it as x, this thing as y, all right? Then this thing, all right? This, this per fg <coughs> satisfied Okay, satisfy this, this condition, all right? So this dg, okay, this is the same as dfn plus one, plus or minus, okay? All right, so if we, if we substitute as this, the xi, all right, then xi has a mean zero, I mean conditional mean zero, this is just the Martingale property, okay? So, so the conditional application of, of this inequality, all right, here, it gives precisely the supermarketing property, all right? And now we are practically done, right? Because we use the modularization, so hence, it does not exceed B. All right, this is just this, this property one, all right. Now we use the super Martingale property, all right, so this does not exceed the expectation of BF0, which is zero, okay, and that's it. That's exactly what we needed, all right. So, so we are done, all right. So we see that each each element of this of this class, all right, of this class of special functions, okay, it modularizes our well desired function b zero. Okay, the beautiful fact is that this is this can be reversed in the sense that this function b zero b zero itself also satisfies these two conditions. All right. Okay, so let us. All right. Okay, so that theorem. So if so formally, we assumed here that, that this class of special functions, okay, that this, these special functions are real valued. I mean, they do not take infinite values, okay? So formally, I, I have to say one thing here. So if, okay, of course, this B0 may be infinite, apparently. There's no reason why, why this would not happen, okay? So if B0 is finite, And it belongs to this special class, okay? Then it satisfies one and so. Okay? And I will, perhaps I will give a, a sketch of this. <coughs> so I find that writing all these details, I do not, I don't think that it's very helpful. Um, just the idea is, is, is more important. So what, what, what do we do? So actually, <clears throat> okay, so the, the first property is, is trivial, right? The bound is, is evident because you, for example, you can always take as this element of mxy, you can always take the constant one, right? So it's trivial. Uh, just such a constant per belongs to n. All right, and to prove this this concavity, all right, we use uh, the so-called splicing argument. Okay, so I, so I will perhaps draw some pictures. I guess it, it's it's most helpful. It's, Okay, so uh, so let us assume, actually, with no loss of generality. Okay, let us assume that 
this underlying probability space is just the interval 0, 1 with its Borel subsets and Lebec measure. All right? Okay. All right. Okay, so after some transformation or whatever, we can, we can assume this. We, there, is, there is no problem with that. <coughs> okay. Okay, and so we want to prove the second property. So pick parameters x, ti, alpha, and y. Mm -hmm. x, y, ti, alpha, as in the statement. All right, and uh, and let us also take uh, f1 g1 from x plus t1. I guess that also there was some epsilon there. Okay, so epsilon. Okay. Okay, so let us take a pair from from this class. And a similar, so I will, from the second, all right, so I will just use the i here, okay, where i is one or two, all right? Okay, and now, <clears throat> what is the idea? The idea is the following, namely, so, take a look. Okay, so, so we have this, this interval 0, 1, okay, here we have this, this first pair, okay, here we have the second pair, okay, and the idea is that we splice them together, we glue them together, okay, just to, just to make one martingale, all right, so what we do, so we have to do this in the right way, okay? So you see, we have here these weights alpha and mi one minus alpha. So okay, what you do, you squeeze this, okay, with parameter alpha. You squeeze this with parameter one minus alpha, all right? Okay, and here you put f1 g1 and appropriately scaled, and here you put F2, G2, right? Okay, and what you get, you get again a martingale. Perhaps, ah, see, I do not want to write these this whole formulas, so I will, I will perhaps only verbalize them, okay? So, again, if we, if we took this pair F1, G1, okay? This is a simple pair, okay? So imagine it, it may stop Right, as, as, we, as we assume. So it, it must stop after some steps, after some deterministic number of steps. Okay, so uh, I don't know, let us assume that it stops after 1,000 steps. Okay, and this thing stops out after, I don't know, 2,000 steps, okay? So what you do, you see, you, so you consider this probability space, okay? And you, you glue these two martingales in the following form, namely, in, during the first, 1,000 steps, this new martingale, this martingale FG, evolves only here, for the first, for, for this first thousand of steps, okay? So it's just evolution here according to the rules of this martingale, okay? And then for, for the next 2,000 steps, okay, it evolves only here according to this. All right? I do not want, I'm, I hope that it's, it's clear what, what happens here, right? So we just glue, glue these two martingales into, into, into one pair, all right? <coughs> um, all right. <laughs> well, as you see, I do not want to write these formulas, but probably I... Can we say that with probability alpha, this new martingale, 
uh, follows uh, the trajectory of M1 and G1, and with probability 1 minus alpha, it follows yes. the trajectory. Yes, 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 exactly, yes. Yes, that's also, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the only thing which needs, and that's exactly why I was here, so a little bit confused. No, the only thing which you need to add here is to, uh, so you said that with probability alpha you evolve with this, with probability one minus alpha you evolve according to this, but you have to add one starting variable. You have yes, to take the mean. Uh, the stage on minus one. Yes, exactly, exactly, that's the, that's the, that's how it can be done, yeah. Yeah, right? Because remember, we, we must start with this new martingale, this new pair FG must start from XY. Okay, so in a sense we start with XY and then we move according to, to these to this to this martingales. Alright? Okay. <coughs> Alright. Okay. Okay. So after this glowing, if you if you take take a look at, at all these things, this resulting martingale belongs to f of, f of belongs to m of x y. All right. And now, therefore, you can write that this b zero Uh -huh. uh, do we assume the epsilon sequence for F1, G1 is the same epsilon sequence for F2, G2? No, that, that, that if, if we did that, we would be in an easier situation. But a priori we don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this would help us because we, would just, we could just glue them, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, so, so what do we do? So we, so we take here, all right? Here we take the sufficiently large n, okay? And directly from the, so here this n is large, okay? This is sufficiently large so that it captures the, the this whole evolution of this marking here, okay? And this is larger than, Okay, just from the very construction, you just, okay, because the splitting ratio here was, was this alpha, okay, so we have alpha times this expectation of the first pair, at one minus alpha, the expectation of the second pair, all right? Okay, and now if we look at, at this chain, and if we take the supremum, Over these pairs, all right, we get the desired concavity. All right. So I well I I understand that well. This is this is a sketch. I mean, you you just have to. There is a, a simple formula for this for this splitting. You know, but it's kind of long, and I did not want to write it. So that's just that's the, that's just the, the sketch. Of this, of this proof. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so you see, there is, there is a, there is a general methodology which, which, which arises. Okay, namely, some remark. Okay. So s suppose. Well, this remark is closely related to the problems we started with. Okay, so suppose we want to show the 
this inequality, all right? So for instance, this choice V for this difference of power functions, it leads to this LP bound of Burkholder, all right? So suppose we want to show this for all F and Okay, for all FG such that G is the transform of F. Okay, so in particular we assume something about this, uh, this, this particular condition on the zero difference also. Okay, so what is, what is the... Okay, so how, how can we prove this? It suffices to find B which satisfies one, two, and the following third condition, I will say initial condition, Namely, well, we have already talked about this. Okay, what is the point here? <clears throat> why, why do we write this? Um, all right. <clears throat> Okay, so, well, first of all, uh, so this, this statement in this remark is evident, all right? It follows immediately from our previous, previous theorems, all right? It's clear, if you have this function B, which satisfies the three conditions, then this uh, inequality follows, all right? Okay, the point is that um, <coughs> actually this special function B, all right, this, uh, it does not have to be the same as B0. All right? Because generally, uh, the general chain is the following. We want to show this estimate, okay? We associate the corresponding Bellman function B0, okay? And if we manage to find this B0, everything is fine, okay? We get this estimate, we get many more information, okay? The point is that if we have this estimate, we may also find some other function. We need not find this sharp Bellman function, okay? But sometimes, if we are only interested in proving this estimate, then sometimes it's, it's easier to work with some other functions, right? I mean, what I mean, the, in a sense, the Bellman function which leads to an estimate is not unique, okay? And it, very often, it really, if you choose appropriately, it really gives you much much simpler com computations, really, okay? However, okay, however, it's often worth to find this B0 because it, because it gives much more information, all right? All right. Okay, so, <clears throat> all right. Uh, so I will I will conclude this this basic. Well, we remember that this is just the basic form of the of the Bellman function method. So I will I will just uh, I will just finish by by giving some some easy some easy remarks, which are sometimes very helpful. So okay. So first remark is well I have already verbalized it. So the Bellman function. Okay. So the special function perhaps. Okay. A special function, okay, which which leads to this estimate, okay, is not unique in general, okay. It may be unique, but sometimes it's not. Okay. So sometimes 
there are many Bellman functions which, which lead to the to this special uh, fixed estimate. Okay. Of course, B0 is unique. Well, it's just given by the formula. Okay. Second second remark, which is which is uh, also very easy, is is the following, uh, namely, well, so if we are given a concrete uh, function v, okay, and we we start to look for this for this Bellman function, okay, and there is a there is a question. How can we find it? Okay, and where where should we search for it? Okay, so the first very initial remark is that sometimes if V has some additional properties, some symmetry, some homogeneity, or something like that, then we may also search for B in, in such a class. And this is also very simple. Okay, so if V is symmetric or homogeneous. Then B0, okay, this 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 optimal, this sharp Bellman function, okay, uh, also have this has these properties. Okay, I will not prove this here. It's very easy. It follows from the very definition. Okay, we just take a look at the definition of B0 and you work. A little bit, very, very, very easy reasoning. All right, and the third thing, which, um, which is also very important, is that okay. Here we worked everywhere. We worked with uh, real valued processes. Okay, real valued martingales. Okay, uh, but this can be easily uh, weakened. For example, um, if um, if we assume at the big, from the very beginning that the martingale F is non-negative, and G is its transform, and so on and so on, and we want to study this estimate, okay? Then we need to construct these special functions, or not on the whole plane, but only on half plane, on the right half plane, right? So, for instance, I will just write this. So, works for other domains. Okay, but for convex domains, right? Okay, okay, so uh, if, uh, if, for instance, we want to prove this inequality for non negative F, for F. Negative, okay, and G is plus minus one transform, okay. In particular, it may be positive, negative. We do not assume anything about the sign of G, okay. We only assume that this transformed martingale is uh, is non-negative, okay. Then it suffices to find the special function on the right uh, half plane, okay. Okay, then we need to change the domain of the Bellman function. That's it, okay. So we search. This this that's trivial for B zero one. So all these definitions must be modified accordingly. All right, so that the, the underlying domain is is, is is from this half plane. Okay, everything also works fine for uh, vector valued processes. Also, everything you just rewrite all these defin these definitions, these conditions one, two, and so on, and so on, and so on. And nothing changes. Okay. If you, for example, assume that FG take values in a Hilbert space or take values in, in a Banach space, it's all the same. All right. There is also there is also one one small remark. It's it's connected with the so-called method of moments. All right. Namely, sometimes it's a very there is a very convenient method of, of finding such such a Bellman function. Namely, suppose you do the following thing. Namely, consider so okay. Again, we will be in a 
in the simpler setting, okay, and define the following sequence of functions, namely let v0 be equal to, to v, okay, and let's assume that vn plus 1 is Okay, I will write this, then I, I say what I mean. Vn. So, psi is a random variable with mean zero. Okay, and psi is simple, right? So there is no problem with integrability. All right? Oh, here is, I'm sorry, this x, y. Okay? Right, so again, so we we take this this function v, okay? We associate the sequence of functions, okay? Uh, all right, so you see that um, right, this is a very well uh, explicit form, right? For for it's not difficult to if you have v n, it's not difficult to to in some occasions at least, okay, to, to derive the, the right formula for this Vn plus 1, right? And the, the thing is, in some situations, right, in some simple situations, um, this, this sequence Vn stabilizes after some steps, okay? Okay, so you, in a sense you iterate this, this, this sequence, you start with this V0, V1, V2, V3, after, after a few steps, 3 or 4, sometimes this thing stops. And if this is the case, then this fixed point, this fixed function, is the Bellman function. All right? Why is it so? It, this function Vn has a very nice probabilistic interpretation. Namely, we have that Vn of xy is just the supremum All right, but here, here this n is the same as here. All right, and again this fg belongs to mx1. All right. So, in other words, you see this 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 vn is a kind of uh, restricted b0. I mean, restricted to the martingales of length n or n plus one. All right, so it's clear that if, if the sequence uh, stabilizes after a number of steps, okay, then it must necessarily be this function b zero. Okay, and there are several cases we will see them uh, that you can actually compute this v n. It's not difficult to compute v zero, v one, v two, and suddenly the whole procedure stops. So that's a very concrete method of finding finding the Bellman function. Okay, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, of course, it does not work in all situations, okay? Unfortunately. Can you give a simple situation where it might work? It works for the weak type estimate. Oh, it does? Yes, for this weak type 1-1 one, one estimate, yes. So it produces the, the best concept after, after two iterations, after two steps. V, V2 is, is the right function. So it's quite effective in, in, in some situations, all right? Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay, and what? And I've got five minutes, right? Probably it's not a bad I, I, I can ask a question. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. So, so you assume, maybe that's the basic version, right? You're assuming you're only fixing two parameters, x yes. and y, only the initial values. Yes. But the method allows for fixing more. Yes, and yes, and that, that's, that's what I wanted to move into, but that would require something like. 
30 minutes or something like that, so I think that's, well, it's not enough time right now. But yes, 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 exactly, that's what I would like to say, yeah. Sure. But then, okay, you also have another talk, right, in, in less than an hour. No, so I think... Uh, if you, uh, different continuation will be tomorrow, yes? That's yes, 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 yes. The continuation yes. of this will be tomorrow, and yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that... Yeah, yeah. We may need a break, right? Oh, yes, it will be too... Uh, to... Maybe any more questions? I have a question about that splicing. But uh, I mean, isn't this uh, in in effect? Maybe may, may I'm wrong. Uh, splicing the two probability spaces, one one on the interval from zero alpha, the other one on alpha one, into one big one. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's very easy to see when 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 you are not dealing with, with I mean with the prob in, when you are not uh, speaking probability language when you are just yeah. concatenating two functions together. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but there is no problem, you know, because well, it, this this ratio alpha and one minus alpha they sum up to one, so there is again this probability space. There there is nothing nothing special about this. Yeah, there are no problems with that. So in a way, that's decomposing the the probability space. Uh, <sighs> Well, in a sense, you know, in a sense, what, what is the reason for this, for this thing? Actually, what you want to do, you want to do this thing. So you have the starting point x, y, all right? Then the first, the first point, you, at the first step, you move either to the step, right, either, either here or, to, or, or here, all right? Okay, that's the first step. Okay, here you move with probability, here you move with probability alpha, here you move with probability one minus alpha. Okay, and if you went here, you move accordingly to this first martingale, this F1, G1, <coughs> first pair. If you move here, you move accordingly to the second pair. Okay, and that's the martingale. Right, so, so you toss a coin and then you end up with on one half yeah. meter or on, on Yeah, on the only thing which you, what, what you have to remember about is that you, you also have the starting point. Okay, because you, you do not have, if you just flip a coin, you know, it would be just that you start from, from, from such a distribution. I with alpha here and one, yeah, yeah. And if you add this additional point here, you start from a fixed x, y. Yeah, that's the idea, yeah. 